Welcome to the Dharmaraj College Education Research Training Program 2020. Dharmaraj College Education Research Training Program is targeting for a conference on education research at national level to be held on 29th October 2020. This is going to be a virtual conference. In preparation for this conference, we are launching a series of lectures to support you all to carry out your education research. This activity is in collaboration of, with Ministry of Education, Provincial Director of Central Province, and Postgraduate Institute of English, and uh, in in a lot of contribution from Microsoft organization. And uh, we are enrolling in the program as uh, Darwaja College Boy Boy, All Boys. Now, this is the first lecture of the series. As I said, our target is to have this Dirk 2020 conference, virtual conference on 29th October. And those who are already carrying out education research can present their papers on this day. Any other research training program in the country, international or national level, can present their papers. And in fact, we promote students to present their research that may be education or otherwise. And the teachers can promote such research. And a research training program is going to be a series of lectures and we like them to be interactive lectures. And this is the first of those that series of lectures. I'll be doing uh, basic lectures. In fact, I'm not a great researcher as such, but uh, what I'm trying to do is to show you various areas of importance, give an outline so that you can build on that through the lectures, specialized lectures to follow. I will give a few steps and I will explain a few steps and, and we will be working through it. And subsequently, I will probably do another lecture of the same thing at an advanced level once we have learned together. And in the program, we are trying to appoint a senior mentor who is going to be something who is sort of involved in education and doing having qualifications like a PhD or higher degree. And then we are going to appoint a junior facilitator that's going to be a, a, a medical student or engineering student or a university student of any faculty who can give you support in doing simple things like uh, organizing your presentation, the paper and things like that. And then at the end, if you join in the program, if you follow the program, we, have, we want you to follow at least 10 lectures and then submit a paper and then at the end you will get a certificate of complete success, uh, complete successful completion of the course. The whole program is a, is a matter of practical experiential learning, activity-based learning. And we are doing some lectures to learn some facts, facts but we would like you to learn uh, actively so that it's not just uh, gathering knowledge, but at a higher level of application level and understanding level of, and analytic level of knowledge. And you will practice it and reflect yourself to understand it better. And then uh, you will get feedback from your mentors. At the end, you will perform and then you will internalize this idea of uh, education research. Now, Education research target is for you to become a teacher. What do I mean by that? Now, if you think about the subject knowledge, somebody can read and understand or memorize a subject so that you can deliver information back to students and test students. And that's not good enough. And you need to have a deep understanding. You should be able to apply that knowledge. You should be able to analyze that knowledge and you should be able to create new knowledge 
on the same subject. And that's how you become an expert in the subject. And that expertise is not good enough to become a teacher. You need to know about teaching, how to teach. And then you must have, you must apply that knowledge in the context, do it repeatedly and familiarize with it. And then you should be able to analyze and synthesize and develop new methods of teaching. And that's how you become expert in teaching. So the process of knowing, understanding and becoming a teacher is different. And it is a transformation. And it's a different level of knowledge, different attitudes and different uh, whole behavior. And it's not only in your mind, but also in your heart and soul. So you become a teacher so that your teaching become an enjoyable experience. So that is what we like you to be. In fact, we are working on this, uh, not just uh, once, and we have done it in 2018. So we have gathered some experience in our last, from our last conference. And in the whole program, we are trying to introduce 10 steps in education research, where we will be talking about selecting a topic, what interventions that you are planning to do and what is the expected outcome, and then write in an objective. Probably today's lecture, this part one of the lecture, will confine to those three, but you have to proceed. And then you have to think of a research methodology and what tools you are going to use, and then how to select a sample. And once you have selected a sample, you need to write a proposal, and then you need to ensure the quality of data collection. And that's an important topic. Uh, now, by that time, you have sort of plan everything, but then how are you going to make sure that your research is a quality one? And then you need to collect data, and then you have to analyze data. Data analysis is an important topic. And then you have to write an abstract and research paper, and then you have to do the presentation and publication on 29th October. So this is an active program. Uh, at the end, uh, our success is if you have done this paper. Now think about your research topic. I'm sure you all must be as active teachers having some idea, some sort of understanding about education research probably has thought of it and then write down that topic and you can pause this lectures topic now and then write your topic. And that is very important for you to do that. If you do that, you will have better understanding. Okay, if you have done that, we'll proceed with the rest of the lecture. Now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of the ideas from me and uh, from reading and from textbooks and more ideas. So you can refresh and you can write it now. Selecting a topic, you need to think of education system as three things. You have a process of education and there's an education environment and there are outcomes in education. Now, what is the process of education? Process of education is what you are involved in. Methods of teaching, methods of assessment, methods of evaluation. So they all come under the process. Probably you must be having some concern about the process that we are adopting at present. So think of that, and that can be your topic. Education environment can be a human environment or physical environment. In fact, I have divided that into three here. You can have your education as a physical structure, the referring to the building, facilities available, your garden and roads and all that physical structure. And then education material, that is your online teaching material, your Maggie boards and blackboards and other material and the books and the internet and all that. And then uh, you have a human structure to the education environment that is uh, like the most important factor. Human structure includes teachers, parents, and the society, sorry for that spellings, and uh, entire human 
the interaction become education environment. Their family, the social media, the newspapers, TV, and all that become education environment. So that can have impact on your education. Probably you, are, you may be having concerns about it and you are thinking of doing research on that. And the outcomes is also important. Outcome is uh, not only just what you assess by your exams, exam paper marks, and that is testing knowledge. In fact, you can test higher order knowledge, but it's only testing knowledge. But then whether you need to, whether you need to test, whether you can test, test their attitudes, change in behavior, change their, uh, uh, their, their this whole person. It's not only the mind, heart, but also the soul and whether they are going to change. So those are outcomes. And then, in fact, uh, your, your education research can be based on content of education, our syllabus. In fact, that may have to go to the process. So, again, if you are look at the same thing, education process involves, should be based on and involves expectations of the society. What is the purpose of spending so much of money on education? What is the education outcomes that we are expecting? So we need to look at the expectations of the society in the process of evolving, developing education. And probably your research can involve that area. You may be interested in finding out what the expectations of the society and whether we match that in the, in the school. And then you have to think of what to teach. And is it only the subject matter that we have to teach? or whether the society is expecting us to do something beyond that, to change attitudes, change behaviors, change their wisdom, their whole person. So is, does the society indicate that they like to have that type of teaching? If that is so, how to teach what they want? That is an important thing because it's the society that spends so much of money on education and we are only supporting the society. So therefore, we need to provide what the society wants and how to teach become very important. And uh, simply doing lectures is not good enough. That's what I'm trying to say. There are a lot more to do if you want to educate. And then no education is complete unless you assess it because assessment drive learning and education. So therefore, you have to think of assessment methods and your research can involve in that area. And then what you mean by evaluation is no business is complete unless you evaluate the success of it and whether we are earning the value of that business. So education is a, is a form of a business where we invest so much of money, so much of energy, so much of time and so much of uh, space uh, in our life for education. And the, whether the education is returning what is invested and whether it is effective, whether it is so entire process of evaluation, how cost effective education is and whether the people are satisfied about it, whether the people are making the making use of that. So those are the things to think of as evaluation. So in the process, do not forget that we are involved with a group of stakeholders they involve our students, the society, parents, culture, teacher, and the Ministry of Education. So they are all stakeholders. We need to deal with them and we need to sort of readily, effectively get involved with them in the process of education research. If you want to change the world, I think education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Make sure that you change in the correct direction. The world is built on our thoughts. In fact, this is even before Lord Buddha, Thais in Greece, he said, in reality, sun is only a ball of burning metals. Now, we must understand this in the context where people, everybody thought that there is something uh, unseen, Power is operating somewhere which we don't understand. But he, he said, no, it's not. It's just a material thing. 
Solar Buddha says in reality a person is another changing collection of material and mental processes. It's not only the material but also the processes, mental processes. It's a collection of material and mental processes. So stakeholders in education, if you are to look at in another way, and in fact, I must thank the uh, Minister of Education, the Director of uh, Education Research for improving my presentation, not only this slide, then uh, the entire process was uh, checked and uh, analyzed. So our students are looked after by not only teachers, parents, Ministry of Education, Society and Culture. So, so much of investment on uh, to look after students. Now, when you select a topic for education research, it's very really likely that everybody look at it whether it's an important topic, whether it's a useful topic. So that will depend on the current interest. Probably people talking about uh, online lectures will be sort of interesting these days, but uh, learner-centered teaching, active learning and things like that. And we need to address common problems first, not very rare things. And what is the impact of education? And whether the education is changing the society, whether the education has uh, caused burden to the society, whether the parents are, are, are under stress because of the education. Cost in all, how much do they spend? Is it bearable? Are they sort of, you know, compromising from their meals because of education? And where's the balance? So that's important. How much money they are spending for traveling in education? Concern of the society. Society may be having certain concerns. And then risk involved. The education process itself may be a risk. We know that certain exams causes distress and stress and there are even suicides. So that's risk involved. And, 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 and then, in fact, I was reminded of other aspect of it. When you design a research, research itself can be a risk. And you must be careful that when you gather information, that should not cause any harm, any harm to a child. Uh, we'll be talking about it in detail. So the risk can be of uh, of different types. I like this statement: Children must be taught how to think, not what to think. I think probably we are doing always is. Uh, most of the time we get students to remember things, but the better thing that we do is we ask them to think, but then we always tell them what to think. And Albert Einstein also said the same thing. Education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. It's a process of thinking. And uh, he says, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is it is stupid. I'm just asking the question because of your testing method of recalling knowledge and uh, writing with a pen and a pencil or a pen or a pencil on a paper. How many of uh, genius children out there uh, have been uh, living as fish? Uh, thinking that they can't do anything. So whether we should sort of think of our assessment. Uh, just to give you some examples of education research uh, 2018, uh, the, 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 the topics that they propose, uh, I have a list of them. They're not my suggestion, they are suggestions. Promoting students who ask questions in the class, students' preparation for the class, education and family bonds, student response to close-ended and open-ended questions, recalling and application of knowledge, analysis of students' performance to analytical questions, link between growth and intelligence, physical growth and educational outcomes among preschool children, interpersonal skills, inculcating empathy, communication skills and educational outcomes, parenting styles and education, impact of maintaining a meaningful diary by students. You can use these topics, there's no prohibition, but then I must tell you now, these topics have come from uh, those participants of uh, Dirk 2018. In fact, you can see that I have learned from them, probably I have influenced their knowledge as well. So there's, we have 
we have shared our knowledge and experiences in the process of this developing these topics but i thought though uh, these are sort of you know good examples of education research topics okay again i will pause once again for you to write the topic now i strongly believe that it is vital at the beginning for you to think of a topic and then proceed the rest of the lecture because unless you really think of a topic you can change it there's no problem and when you think of a topic you can really engage in the process of learning and that become really active learning uh, we know that we have to inculcate encourage active learning participatory learning and then do it then only you will really understand it i'm not going to teach much but i'm just trying to sort of get you to use your brain and uh, i know that you have sort of uh, so much of uh, uh, uh energy intelligence and not only that attitudes and then uh, your your entire person is uh, uh, has motivated for this so therefore write a topic now pause this lecture and write a topic now uh, before getting going on with the rest of the lecture right now if you have written the lecture uh, the topic Uh, probably when you you have written the topic you have thought of a innovation or intervention and what you are going to expect and that is in your mind in your heart and i will do this i'm sure i'm going to achieve this so so that is there but that is probably vague you need to write it now when you write it things become clearer so what are the possible interventions or innovations and what are the outcomes you need to write that what is what do you want to do and it may be a teaching method that you try to experiment or a method of assessment or maybe an evaluation of the education system and it may be buildings or educational material and technology or uh, teachers competencies or parents attitudes and your intervention can involve any of these things and now you need to write i will change this i will change i will adopt this new method of teaching and like likewise sort of it's only you know it i i don't know much about it and then you need to think of what is the outcome you are expecting is it the examination results that you want to change improve or is it the competencies that you want to improve in your child or whether it's a character quality or whether you want to improve the student satisfaction and whether you want to improve the student engagement and whether you want to improve the teachers perceptions about teaching and the parents perception or whether you want to improve the cost effectiveness of education so now start thinking write down what is the intervention that you have in your mind and then what is the expected outcome because you need to write this because your interventions cannot be too many it should be one or two if at all and outcomes cannot be too many because it's difficult to measure because now you need to think of whatever the outcome you are writing you have to measure for you to make it a research i like this uh, from lord buddha in the kalam sutra now this is a modified version of it not the original version of it but it gives a good meaning rely not on the teacher but on the teaching rely not on the words of the teaching but on the spirit of the words rely not on theory but on experience do not believe in anything simply because you have heard it do not believe in anything simply because it is spoken and rumored by many do not believe in anything simply because it is found written in your religious books do not believe in anything merely on the authority of your teacher and elders do not believe in traditions because they have been handed down for many years but after observations and analysis observation and analysis when you find that anything agree with reasons and it and is conducive to good and benefit of one and all then accept it and live up to it say it's very important and conducive to good and benefits of one and all then accept it and leave it
live up to it. I think that is what education research means. You don't believe just because if they're in the book and you want to try it and you want to observe and analyze, do it and see. And, and then you have sort of, you know, if you're going to accept it, if it's conducive to good and benefits for one and all and then accept it. Confucius says, I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. So therefore, in education research also, do it for you to understand it. You understand, I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. If you do the education research, you understand it. It's not about knowing about it. It's much deeper than that. You need to become a researcher in that sense. As much as I said, you should become a teacher. So this pyramid shows that Lecturing alone, retention is only, retention is less than 10%. If you read the book, you can do it better, 10%. I use audiovisuals to support your, to improve the retention of my lecture. But then I like to do some demonstration. I think probably we are doing demonstrations in the process. And then uh, you need to get in all in uh, discussions, probably. Uh, it's best that you discuss this with your colleagues in the school and then that will improve your knowledge. Because one person retain 10%, the other person also retain 10%. It's not the same and you share it and then you will improve it. And then do it practically 75% of retention. That is what we want to do in this program. And then uh, if you can be a teacher, use these slides and teach another person and modify them. I'm, I'm sure there are a lot to improve in these slides and you can definitely improve your knowledge and your understanding. Education is not filling of a vessel, but it's lighting of a flame. So in the class, go and light those flames. Don't uh, take uh, too many things and try to fill those vessels. Dalai Lama says when educating the minds of your our youth, we must not forget to educate their hearts. I think I'm, sh I'm sure he is sort of very meaningful one when he says that he's talking not so telling us that giving factual knowledge alone is not enough. You need to sort of inculcate compassion, altruism, communication, collaboration, social responsibility, adaptability, tolerance, and, and you can think of many more that goes beyond factual knowledge. You need to change people if you are to achieve that uh, a better world future. In fact, this aspect has been looked at this uh, global, globally accepted 21st century student outcome framework. And uh, in the green in the center, you can see that uh, they're talking about the subject, core subjects, and uh, I'll be showing it in another slide. And then it's uh, embraced with this uh, competencies here, forces, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. And here, the life and career skills, there are many more things here, like uh, adaptability, innovation, tolerance, resilience, stuff like that. Then on this side, you have information, media, and technology skills. So that is embraced with the students' uh, standards and assessments, and curriculum and instructions and development and learning environment. See the communicate creativity, critical thinking and collaboration mentioned here. In fact, uh, we a group of uh, educationists uh, or those who are interested in education, in fact, with some parents and some teachers and and even some university students, we had a couple of workshops and developed this education framework uh, is, a, is only in the, uh, as a proposal. We believe that there are four aspects to think of. And this is here we are showing those list of subjects to each. Literacy, neuro, numeracy, scientific literature, ICT literacy, financial literacy, cultural and civic literacy. This is what is there in international education frameworks. But we thought aesthetics and the philosophy are two important aspects to incorporate as subject knowledge. And we have listed, uh, expand the competencies, four competencies by adding compassion and connectivity as competencies. We believe that uh, compassion is a, is a competency 
and because it's, it's trainable and the connectivity is interpersonal skills and then the character quality is like uh, curiosity persistence adaptability leadership social and cultural awareness and then we have added this box in because people were sort of thinking that we are in uh, in this asian culture we like to inculcate the wisdom and the values in their lives like mindfulness respect and obedience altruism gratitude patriotism and self actualization so so uh, edu interventions can be in, can be sort of improving any of those these things in the in the process uh now i'm sure you all give feedback you give feedback to your children and your students children and your friends and colleagues you give feedback in the process of giving feedback we have a bad tendency of showing what is wrong and you know what is wrong is the sort of feedback that is not that's not quite good it's not going to help because understanding what you don't know what you are bad or what you are wrong or is not going to help much hmm? what is important is to understand how good you are appreciating what is good and it's not just a matter of telling that you are good then ending at that no it's not getting in all in an appreciative inquiry uh, look at it and appreciate it and how talk how good about it and then uh, ask their opinion why did you do this and this is really nice and i like this and this is this there's a difference from what i'm thinking and how can we improve this so that is the appreciative inquiry approach and child rearing practices create the world so it is education and as educationist teachers do we have to get in all in this process of child rearing practices i believe so because uh, you are dealing with parents and it is very important for us to get in all with parents because education is not just a part of life education is the life that start from birth education is the life where you can see that adequate nutrition good health responsive care and security and safety and opportunities for early learning are uh, very important to have that uh, a nurturing child but then two things responsive care giving and uh, opportunities for early learning and they are all in all very much in all in education in fact the entire process is in all in education so i think we have a responsibility in getting in all in that and parenting style is something to research and something to change you have authoritative parents they are highly demanding and highly supportive and they are they are not just uh, and they use this appreciative inquiry approach they are authoritative with their parents and authoritarian parents are they are highly demanding and not supportive they find fault and they will tell you and they demand and this is what you should do and and those parents who are dictating terms and they tend to uh, command things very frequently sad and suggest things and getting in all with them and there are some parents who are not not support you not demanding you give the freedom for them to do whatever they like and let them grow and then there are neglectful parents so uh, i believe that improving parenting style can be a part of the teacher's job and that is going to be one effective way of educating your children and and how are you going to involve with parents become important topic to discuss in education research that can be a good education intervention the secret is in education lies in respecting the student do you respect do a research and find out how many times we we sort of disregard and uh, occasions that how much of uh poor respect or lack of respect exhibit in our life whether we can improve it that is the end of the part 1 of this lecture so we have your part 2 and part 
I think now before you going into the next part of the lecture, you must have the topic written. Think of your intervention and expected outcomes, and and that will if you do that and if you discuss that with your friends, that is going to help and that will be a very useful thing uh, to follow the rest of the lecture. Thank you.